ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Cedar Point Sports Center for tonight's NCO Senior All-Star Game between Team Sockel under Coach Jason Sockel of Vermillion and Team Schaefer under Coach Darius Schaefer of Huron High School. Hello, everybody. My name is Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray and about ready to go for what could be the final time for these 22 seniors. Yeah, you know, we were talking a little bit during the underclass game. It's cool that they got get to have that game this year um, and, and think about that. But, yeah, for some of these seniors, you know, Coach Lansfield is saying that you can, you know, elect yes. to play in a couple of these. But that might not be the case for some of them. So and could be the last time on the court yep. here. In our other broadcast, you did see the underclassmen, the squad coached by Scott Sellers at Clear Fork High School, knocking off Coach Vent, Jerry Vent's squad. In a close one, Coach Vent squad tried to come back but just couldn't get it done. Seller squad winning that one, but this should be a good one. A lot of high quality talent. And let's get right into it. Uh, lead us off with the Hurons, uh, the squad by. Here we go, at the top of the class on a roll. And it's time to run it up, yeah, you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor. Hey, on a roll, here we go, here we go, yeah. At the top of the class on a roll, hey. And it's time to run it up, yeah, you know, yeah. Maxed out, put the pedal to the floor, yeah. On a roll, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Nervous? Oh, Blaze. Brings back so many good memories. Remember our road trip in 97? Our first real heart to heart. I've never seen any of your movies! Not even the ones we're in together! Hey, do you remember when that stalker kidnapped us? Yes! Blaze was there. Blaze. Do you have a barbecue? Or a cheddar jalapeno? Ooh. Oh, remember when we stumbled into that turf war? Ah! Remember when you bought your first house? Ah! Hey, I'm dead! Those were good times. They were golden. You ready? Seth, do you? I do. And Janet, do you? That's a yes. and co-player of the year in the MOAC, followed by Claudia Pfeiffer, first team Northwest District D4, first team District 6, and first team N10. Then we got Becca Conrad, another first team Northwest District D2, first team MOAC from Clear Fork. McKenna Depinette from Seneca East, another all Northwest District, first team in her conference. Number 20, Grace Hall from Willard, an honorable mention Northwest District, first team SBC. Ava Weinstaffer from Huron. First team Northwest District and first team SBC. Kelly Baker from Sandusky Perkins, second team District D2 and first team SBC. Aaron Stevens from Plymouth High School, honorable mention Northwest District. Riley Nye out of Ontario High School, honorable mention District 6 and honorable mention Moak. Natalie Perkins, another second team district and conference player from Galleon, the Lady Tigers. And then Izzy Duche from Western Reserve, honorable mention Northwest District. Second team D6 and first team SBC. And a state final four player in Pfeiffer, a regional finalist in Sophia Nice. Hello, guys. <laughs> Welcome on in here to our broadcast table. McKenna Depinette played in a district championship. Uh, Kelly Baker played in a district semifinal. Yeah. You know, a lot of good talent. And then on the other side of things as well, Team Sockel from Vermillion High School, his squad, led by 
the Division IV All-Ohio Player of the Year, Emily Cecil, first team to Player of the Year in the Northwest District, the Player of the Year yeah. in District 6, the Player of the Year in the N10. Maddie McCall from St. Paul High School, first team District 6, first team Firelands Conference. Uh, Avery McMillan, first team Northwest District player, first team District 6, first team N10. Faith Kuhn from Madison, first team Northwest District First team District 6, the co-District 6 player of the year in Division 1, first team OCC. Aubrey Bullion from New Regal, first team District 6, first team SBC. Amelia Bowes, another one that played in a district yeah. championship game, first team District 6, first team Northern 10 from Seneca East. Mariana Plas from Vermilion, first team Northwest District, first team District 6, the player of the year in the SBC Lake Conference. Olivia Baker, someone who we saw play in a regional championship game from Shelby. First team Northwest District in D2. First team District 6, second team MOAC, which is a travesty. She deserved to be first team, 100%. but I'm not getting back into yeah. that. We talked about that enough. <laughs> Sydney Homan from New Ringle, second team District 6. And Grace Rothar from Willard, honorable mention SBC. One player not here is Kaylin Risner from Colonel Crawford High School. Got to mention her. 16.9 points per game, 5.1 rebounds, 2.5 assists, two steals. She is first team Northwest District, first team District 6, first team Northern 10. And we talked just enough Ooh. to get to the opening tip of this one. It's going to be friends going up against each other. Yeah. Faith Kuhn, Becca Conrad, who will win this tip? Well, we'll find out here short. I think that's my most exciting thing about this game, friends and teammates on both sides tonight. Becca Conrad wins it and gives it to Sophie's. We are underway. Homan dishes it out for three. That's definite. Yeah. Three nothing. Couple of girls that squared off in districts over at Willard High School. Now teammates here tonight. Ball fake takes it inside. It's stolen away. Ava Weinstaffer with the steal. Gets it Denise. Pull up jumper from the elbow. Off the backboard, but it's rebounded by Depinet. And Depinet was a girl we saw score, you know, her team's first 18 points at Willard High School. So we'll see, you know, first shot of the night for her. We'll see how much offense she's able to provide tonight. You know, everyone wants to get. Get the fall, and other way comes Team Sockle. Emily Cecil, off to McCall, left side, Marianne Plus. now to Kuhn, she will try a three, off the back iron, rebound, knocked out of bounds, no it stays <laughs> in, stays into the chagrin of Sophie Neese and she takes it the other way to Depinet for the lay in, five points all by McKenna Depinet to start. And that's something we're used to seeing Sophie Neese dropping dimes, we're used to seeing that to Haley and Audie quite a bit but that time finding Depinet. Olivia Baker going to try for three off the front arm, but Faith Kuhn is there, guarded by Conrad, misses it, and Depinette with another rebound. And Depinette going with the long sleeves as well. Yeah, a little style statement to that. And, I mean, this is one of those where it's almost overwhelming just trying to absorb the amount of talent that's out there on one court. I mean, the amount of times if we had a dollar for every time we said first team in some category during pregame. A lot of quality talent here in the Northwest District, especially in District 6. That three off the mark, Faith Kuhn. Ahead to Baker, back to Kuhn. Nearly stolen away, but it will stay. No, it is a turnover. And we'll go back the other way. Players in right now for both sides. Nice, Weinstaffer, Depinet, Conrad Pfeiffer. And one of those girls out there right now, you've seen a couple shots up from her, Olivia Baker. 15.3 points per game for the Lady Whippets this year. First team Northwest District, first team District 6. And, I mean, you know, we don't have enough time, of course, when there's a game going on to read that bio, but just so many good things that Coach Lance had to share about her, you know, in the coaches' comments. And same goes for a lot of these girls out here today. And on the other end of things, Cecil, Kuhn, Baker, Ploss, as that three is off the mark, and Maddie McCall. 
Those are the starters from both sides. We are yet to see a substitution yet, but we will. Also, I want to give a shout-out to head coach Amy Taylor Sheldon of Winford. She'll be here in the second quarter to talk with us about putting this together. Kuhn, mid-range jumper, no good, but rebound oh. to Ploss. Oh. <laughs> Big block. Big authority there. Yikes. So you take a look at the, the replay. Boom. Woo. Clean block, Return too. Turn to Stender via Weinstaffer. Inside the McCall. Back out. Kuhn's going to try another three. Faith Kuhn hits. There it goes. And she's been doing that all year for the Lady Rams. She really has a nice shot from around the arc. One of those dynamic players that is a threat in the paint but then can step out and shoot it as well. She had, I believe, 12 or 13 threes on the season. Ball out of bounds. It'll stay. And yeah, I feel like I need to. I need to, you know, add in some of the Faith Coon love and compliments here. I know <laughs> you. But you brought it up earlier. She gave me flack for the picture I had to talk about flack, earlier, though. right? And then, then we made it up. I built her into a hype, and everything is well now. Faith Coon wants to be a sports yeah. reporter. If you watch the uh, underclassmen games during the shooting competition. She did some play-by-play. -play. Not bad. Yeah. Especially after going back and forth yeah. in the. Uh, Mike and drill. Plus gets on the board. We're tied at five. Coming up on the midway point of quarter number one. Nice. Right side to Pfeiffer. Now at the wine staffer. Midway's jumper off the front iron. Faith Kuhn with rebound. And just like the underclassmen game, both teams feeling each other out right now. Not a ton of scoring, but as I say that, Kuhn nearly gets it to go, but misses. Offensive board for the squad, though. Foot might be on the line there. We'll see if they give that a two or three. Referee says two, but McCall on the board, and now we will have our first substitutions coming in. Not really sure how I knew that was a two with my glasses off, but hey. Sockles bunch will check in. So cool. And there's Claudia doing something she's done all year long, helping Sokol's lead. Sockles bunch. <laughs> and we're going to have both teams with line changes. Thank you to the fan behind me. I apologize, Coach Sokol, <laughs> hey. for that. And. <laughs> Ullian out back front to Roberts. Ball out of bounds. It'll go the other way. Seven all here in this first quarter of the senior all-star game. Riley Nye. The Ontario Warrior gets it right side. Three in the air is good. Aaron Stevens. Great. Team Schaefer the lead. Yeah, great job by Nye there on the dish. She averaged 4.1 assists per game throughout the regular season. Right side. Answer short. It'll go out of bounds, and it will go the other way with 2.46 left in the opening quarter. Yeah, didn't get it to fall that time, but Natalie Perkins, she's going to be off to Bluffton, the Beavers, to play basketball next season. Stevens, another chance off the back iron. Rebound. Comes out to Bullion. From the elbow, goes right side to Sidney Homan. Back to Bullion. Ball saved, but goes into the hands of Riley Nye. One of the top assist leaders in North Central Ohio, if you watched our statistical leaders. Can't get the assist there. Shot a little short. Two minutes left opening quarter. Well, and speaking of assist leaders, Bouillon out there, she holds the school record at New Regal for assist at 434, and she's one away from tying the school record for steals at 393, so a couple records up there for her and a 1,000-point score. Clean block back the other way. Izzy Deschette into the lane. Off the front iron. 
Rebound comes back out to her, now to Nye. Corner three, short. Rebound to Lindsey Roberts. Still just a three-point game here. Offense is coming a little bit, but... And both these squads getting four minutes per group to get in there, get a feel for things. I have a feeling things will start picking up as this game goes on. As we approach 60 seconds left in the opening quarter. A pull-up jumper, no good. That, that one. shot's blocked. Stevens across the timeline. She's going to try to drive it in. Just missed, though. Roberts with the rebound. So still 10-7. And I think now after one game under our belt, I'm starting to pick up around 35 seconds, I believe, is when they start the, the in-game music. Maybe it's a little bit of a signal here. Let them know how much time's left in the quarter. Rebound, good. <laughs> Homan had a couple fans telling her to shoot from the corner. <laughs> she did, got her rebound, put it back, 10-9. On the other end, Natalie Perkins off the hall for three, no good. Five seconds. Chance here for a half quarter. Homan, no, oh. will not do that. And that's how the first quarter will end. Team Schaefer leads it, 10-9. You're watching the NCO All-Star Game on the OH Report. Mild or spicy? Ooh. Spicy. Lab or poodle? Back roads or highways? Back roads. Okay, which Fritos? That is a tough one. Fritos, down for everything. Quarter number two of the NCO All-Star Game. Travis Barari alongside Hayden Gray and a special guest, Winford. Lady Royals head coach Amy Taylor Sheldon. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having us. We, uh, we're excited. <laughs> uh, the OH report has developed over the last couple years, and um, the chance that you guys would come today and uh, give uh, our kids some uh, exposure is just a unique opportunity that we wouldn't have had pre COVID. So uh, we're uh, thrilled that you're here. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate it. And uh, this is the first of three All-Star games we're doing this week. So we'll be back here for the uh, Spy Report one on Thursday and then down for the News Journal All-Star game. That three's off the mark. But uh, this has really developed into a, a really cool All-Star night. You have the underclassmen and you have some, you know, some skills challenges in between with the seniors. It gives everybody from freshmen to seniors a chance of playing another game of basketball. It does, it's fantastic. Um, several years ago, um, Ashland, uh, their booster club, I believe, sponsored the girls' all-star game in North Central Ohio. And that phased out and they didn't have any for a couple years. And um, Natalie and I chatted. Um, we talked to a couple people to see if they wanted to uh, take it over and they didn't. So we just made our own. And uh, Natalie with her, um, you know, passion for um, kids and rewarding their excellence and her um, just her creativity to do all of the uh, the extras you know for fans and kids to have uh, these little competitions in between it is uh, quite an event and she has worked very hard um, to uh, have so many we have some of the best players in the state of Ohio here yeah and um, you know, she's done a terrific job to give our kids these op this opportunity yeah, you have the, the all Ohio player of the year and Emily Cecil, you have Claudia Pfeiffer, who could have been a candidate if she played all of her games. Uh, Avery McMillan, who chanced to be one of the best in the Northern 10 as well, first team. Mm -hmm. You had Avery on your squad. Mm -hmm. uh, a bunch of uh, players. Uh, Sophie Neese, mm -hmm. uh, Olivia Baker. Like, yeah, so it, you it, have. It, just a, a lot of great talent in this area, and it's great that they can all come together and play another game of basketball. Yes, and it's a great opportunity for us to have it here at uh, Cedar Point. And um, I think, again, it's just the um, exposure in this uh, atmosphere, just a little bit different than a high school um, court. But yeah, we have um, a variety of kids, kids that this will be the last game they um, ever play, kids that uh, might be seen by a couple college coaches here that are underclassmen. And then, um, again, kids are gonna play at the next level. So I feel like we've tried to do our best to check off all the boxes. Yeah, and this is a great venue. We were talking about this during the underclassmen game, but Cedar Point did a really good job of making a sports facility. I was up here for the 
the District 6 baseball mm -hmm. game mm -hmm. in May or in June, actually. And then this is my first time inside here. And this is a great venue. I mean, there's, what, 15 courts yeah. out there for people to practice on. Then you have the main one right here where they have their, their holiday games as yeah. well. So, uh, somebody was really thinking. Yeah, <laughs> um, absolutely. Between, uh, well, in a time, too, that um, – there was, uh, you had the space and obviously the uh, money to do this, and you already have the tourism piece. But um, yeah, somebody was really thinking we come up here for a fall basketball league. We've played AAU here. Uh, yeah, so it, it is a very unique uh, venue. Um, I was asking the other coaches, what are some of the matchups you're looking forward to in these games because uh, you don't get these a lot well you know and it's interesting for us um maybe not so much in terms of matchups because but you have division one through four um in our area and there's a lot of great basketball in north central ohio and um i think that um again when you have uh um several players who you know have played um within their league a lot of the kids you know, I haven't seen them play, but I know their names, and it's a great chance to uh, match their name with their uh, face. A lot of times we scrimmage, or you might not even see them. I mean, basketball season is so long and so involved. Uh, you don't get really time to see um, other kids, but, uh, of course, uh, Cecil and Pfeiffer against anyone else. Um, and... Um, Again, some of these big players, I mean, we don't have a lot of uh, six-footers in our league. So when you see uh, Becca Conrad and Faith Coon, who are from um, schools that are uh, towards the Mansfield area, we don't cross their uh, paths, but we scrimmage them both. So that's fun to have them um, here today. Um, yeah, and then it's, it's nice to see some conference rivals playing together mm -hmm. as well. You have McKenna Depinette playing with Claudia Pfeiffer. Yes. Two really good scores. You know, and when we do with the rosters, that's one of the things we kind of want to, you know, see what will come out of that, you know, if they can play off each other. And uh, uh, so, yes, I think that's also uh, an interesting uh, matchup. You know, you have SBC teams, you have M10 teams, you have, um, you know, quite a variety. So um, that's uh, – Interesting, I think, for people to see, too. And uh, as you saw, Olivia Baker, that was a nice take to the hole. But not only that, but players that played in big games this season. You have Buck, a few Buckets out here that played mm -hmm. in the state Final Four. You had mm -hmm. some Shelby Lady Whippets that played in a regional championship game. Uh, district sem district finalists, district champions. Mm -hmm. uh, you guys played a, a tough game. You played Crestview, the two seed, really tough in your sectional game, but a lot of great players that played in big moments this year also mm -hmm. being showcased here. Mm -hmm. I think, uh, well, we saw uh, Shelby at the end of the season. We saw Buckeye Central at the end of the season. Um, some of the, a lot of the district final games, I mean, we were out early, so uh, I have a fifth grader and a seventh grader, and we probably saw 15 basketball games <laughs> between boys, Colonel Crawford, and... Uh, and you have quite the singer as well. <laughs> yes. We were talking about that on the podcast when we had your uh, your husband and his yes. squad in there, but uh, yeah, it's that's a great basketball family you guys have as we well. We do. It is very unique. Um, I did not grow up in a basketball family. Um, my uh, dad was a softball coach, and uh, unfortunately, I was the only non-Division One athlete in my family. <laughs> uh, but uh, I'm the only one that coaches now. So, um, but it, to be a part of the um, Sheldons and their tradition here um, in North Central Ohio is a unique. Uh, my father-in-law always calls me the daughter he never wanted. But, <laughs> uh, so. Um, yes, it has been great fun. Um, our kids are all in on uh, basketball, whoever's playing. And we went to the Boys State Tournament this past weekend and saw some fantastic games. And uh, so that's fun. But that was our vacation. Yeah, there you <laughs> go, right? Um, although it is fun. You have the respect of the Sheldons as well. Chris said in pregame of that district championship game against David that uh, – he, he's fine going up against his brother, but if you were on the bench with him, he'd be a little intimidated. Right. So you have to respect from the uh, from the other Sheldon coaches as well. Right, and unfortunately, I don't have I'm not uh, quite the one liners that all the Sheldons <laughs> have. But uh, you know, we vacation together in the summertime, and we you know with basketball season, it's so busy. But um, I have 13 nephews and. Uh, uh, three nieces, and um, we uh, we have a good time. Very competitive. Everything becomes a game at the Sheldon. So.
Hayden, I'm going to bring you in there. I'm, I'm talking too much. I'll let you <laughs> ask uh, Coach Sheldon a couple questions. We still have two minutes left here in the half, but go for it, Hayden. Well, I mean, I don't want to get too repetitive, but just, you know, talk to me a little bit about what's it like getting to come to this facility and put together all these girls together. We, you know, talk a lot throughout the year about we just feel like we have such a strong basketball community. You know, this is a North Central Ohio All-Star game, but, you know, between all the teams that are represented here, we felt like during the tournament, you just see so much support for one another. Just talk to me about the relationship amongst coaches, amongst players in our area, because it just seems really special. Well, I, you know, I got to tell you, it has been, um, when I started earlier, this is my 26th year at Winford, there was not the camaraderie that we have now. Um, I had, um, because my father-in-law had been long time, you know, I instantly was friends with Steve Moore, Steve Gray, Joe Bailoff, <laughs> you know, some of the um, legends in yeah. boys basketball in our area. And then it really probably wasn't until maybe the last 15 years that uh, girls coaches, I think, I don't know if girls coaches, you had a lot of like turnaround, but so you didn't have that longevity. So with uh, Kyle Fenner and I at Colonel Crawford, we've been the longest. Of course, Natalie has done it for several years. And then, Barry. So when Barry came back to coaching, and then of course Abram Capel is now one of the young ones. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, we uh, you know it's been uh, really terrific. And then again, meeting some coaches that we don't necessarily um, see during the season because yeah. it's just so busy. So uh, yeah, it's a lot better than it was early in my career. So I appreciate that that now you kind of have that um, kinship that I've always seen my friends who are boys coaches have. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's definitely nice to see that you can be competitors on the court, but outside of the game, too, you know, it's bigger than just what happens on the court and that that's definitely building in our area. Yes, absolutely. And I think, too, um, you know, there are, going back to the turnaround and girls coaches, I think uh, you just don't, like, I don't think maybe uh, coaches get as many opportunities to have longevity because uh, people's expectations are unrealistic. So... Uh, to have some young coaches that have opportunities in our area, I think, is a fantastic thing. Well, we are appreciative of all you great yes, coaches here, you. and we appreciate the time you had with us. It was a quick second quarter, thanks to well, you. Thank so you very <laughs> much. appreciate you, and good luck next season, all right, coach. Thanks, thank thanks you. again for being here. 24 21 is your score at the break. We'll be back with the skills competition right here on the OH Report. Hi, I'm OH Report founder Brian Skaronski, and you are just watching live and free Girls High School Hoops exclusively on the OH Report. But stick around, the halftime show is next, including stats, analysis, and so much more, including the second half on the way. Here we go, at the top of the class on a roll, and it's time to run it up, yeah, you know. Maxed out, put the pedal to the flow, hey, on a roll, here we go, here we go, yeah. At the top of the class on a roll, hey. And it's time to run it up, yeah, you know, yeah. Mashed out, put the pedal to the floor, yeah. On a roll, here we go, here we go. Here we go. Nervous? Oh, Blaze. Brings back so many good memories. Remember our road trip in 97? Our first real heart to heart. I've never seen any of your movies. Not even the ones we're in together. Hey, do you remember when that stalker kidnapped us? Yes. Blaze was there. Blaze. Do you have a barbecue or a cheddar jalapeno? Ooh. Oh. Remember when we stumbled into that turf war? <laughs> remember when you bought your first house? Those were good times. They were golden. You ready? Seth, do you? I do. And Janet, do you? That's a yes. Yeah! I love this lady! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
I say. The exclamation point on the night for Maurice Ware. Time here in the senior all-star game, NCO all-star game. Coach Sokol leading Coach Schaefer, 24-21. Travis Brody back here as we get ready for the skills contest. And let's take a look at how they're going to do things here in this skills contest. Eight teams will take part of this. Two players per team. We'll have to go through and... Uh Passing, ball handling, shooting, everything you need. They're going to be timed. Whoever has the fastest time completing will become the skills contest champions. Team one, Riley Nio, Ontario. Makari Chapman of Ashland. Team two, Isabel Deschette, Western Reserve. Destiny Robinson, Fremont Ross. Team three, McKenna Depinet, Seneca East. Kylie Liebacker, Margareta. Team four, Ava Weinstaff of Huron. Manetta Hillary Mansfield Sr. Team five, Kenzie Smith, Smith of Norwalk, Audie Albert of Shelby. Team six, Callie Quillen, Edison, Brooklyn Davis, Norwalk. Team seven, Natalie Perkins of Galleon and Carly Foos of Lakota. And the final team, Maddie McCall of St. Paul, Lindsay Roberts of Edison. Nye and Chapman will start. Nye. Both teams getting their final go-aheads. Here we go. Are we ready? I think we are. Here. They will start on the buzzer. Whenever that goes. Oh, here we go. Riley made each of her shots, but the buzzer didn't go off, so they have to reset. She was off to such a good start, too. Try number two. There we go, and she hits the reverse layup, so it worked. Layup good. Here we go. Through to Cones. Got to do the crossover. Something that I cannot do myself. Getting the layup. 
Has to do a free throw. Got to make the free throw so her teammate can start. Same thing, opposite ways. Reverse layup, layup, crossovers, layup, free throw. Chapman through the layup line. Nearly crossed herself over. Lays it in. Now needs to hit this free throw to stop the clock. It's at 43 seconds. Misses the first. Second one. No good. Clock heading up towards a minute now. Does get the third at 56 seconds. That is the time to beat. Deshette Robinson. Robinson we saw in the underclassmen game. The co-District 6 Player of the Year with Faith Kuhn. Deshette. First team all Firelands Conference. Robinson starts it off. Crosses over once. Twice. And she's through the crossover area in 12 seconds. Free throws are going to be key in who will win this. Perfect for Robinson. Deshette now hits her reverse layup in the main one. Now she will cross it over. 32 seconds. They need to beat 56. She just needs a layup and a free throw. And they'll be in good shape. 16 seconds to get this free throw. Nailed it. 43 seconds. There's your new leader. 43 seconds for Deshette and Robinson. 13 seconds better than Team 1. Team 3, Depinette, linebacker. Leibacher, the underclassman with Division 1 and 2 colleges already looking at her. First team, Northwest District. First team, District 6. And linebacker misses the reverse. Let's get the next two. Crosses over. She's through there. 13 seconds. Layup is true. Now for the free throw. Yes. Definite misses the reverse. That's going to hurt. Gets the second attempt. 13 seconds to get everything else done. Now 10. Crosses over. I don't think they're going to have enough time, so Team 2 will stay in the lead. Can they get into second place? Misses the free throw. Still has six seconds to hit this. And she'll stop the clock at 58 seconds. Good enough for third place. Next up, Wine Staffer and maybe one of the players with the best handles in North Central Ohio, Manetta Hillary. We saw her in the first matchup, and Hillary is nowhere to be oh. found. Mariana Plass will take her place from Vermillion. Six seconds to get through the layups. Crosses over. Looking good so far. Just needs his free throw. Yes, 24 seconds. They need to beat 43. Ooh. That's going to hurt. Gets the second. Just going to make it happen quick. Line Stafford will not break it. That's a chance 43. for second. Yeah. 46. That is good enough for second place. Three seconds off the lead. Halfway through. Deshette Robinson still lead. 
Kenzie Smith of Norwalk, Audie Albert from Shelby, and Audie knows layups. Yeah, that's for sure. Mentioned it earlier, had the biggest layup of the season for Shelby, the buzzer beater. Actually, well, three seconds left yeah. to beat Copley to advance the Lady Whippets to the Elite Eight. And there's some confusion. Albert looking down the other way. All right. We were, hey, we were right. Were, yeah, were confused. Yeah. <laughs> Audie hits the reverse and the make. Perfect. As expected from her. Albert through the crossover area. Pretty smooth. She can hit the free throw. They'll be in the lead after a half. Short still has a second. If she can make this quick. Yes. Nice. Going to have to be perfect the rest of the way. Misses the first reverse in the oh. second. That's going to knock them out of contention. This reverse uh, layup's hey, kind of getting tricky. No. I can't yeah. make one on my first no. 10 tries. So I, I yeah, we can't make it solo in the gym by ourselves, let alone all the eyes on you here. <laughs> hey, they're out here to have fun anyway. Exactly. Going in for the layup. Strong. Can still get... Third place if she hits this. 55 seconds. Well, she did a nice job. Good recovery there. Fourth place. Actually, third place. It is third place. Just got at 55 seconds. So, not bad for a recovery after the reverse layup misses. Next up. Perkins. And Carly Foose. So they moved up to Team 7. Don't know if Team 6 is going to participate or not, but we'll find out. Two misses on the reverse. Does get the third to go. Makes the layup. Gets the crossover. Gets through there in 15 seconds. He's going to have to go quick through this part to catch up. Makes the layup. Has to hit this free throw. Swish. Nice job on the free throw. We'll see. Going to have to move quick here. 13 seconds. That's going to knock them out of first place contention, but they still have a good chance of finishing strong. Crosses over. Ooh, behind the back, too. They throw a little style on it. Can she get third place? Yes. 51 seconds. Solid finish there. Good enough for third. I think we may have a couple substitutions. Teammate, Maddie McCall, Lindsey Roberts. This is the last team to go. Only seven sets are out there, so here we go. They need 43 to win it. Or Duchette and Robinson will win the skills challenge. Oh, misses the reverse. Going to have to speed things up here. Can she get a quick crossover? Yeah, that helps. Gets the layup. Needs to make the free throw. Yes. McCall. Perfect. They have 13 seconds. 10 seconds. Got to get the free throw and a quick, a quick free throw. She's got time. For the win. Yes. 40. McCall hit it at 42. They win it. They win it. Buckets. By one second. 
Maddie McCall and Lindsay Roberts are your skills champions. Congratulations to them as they take home some nicely colored t-shirts. Before we get back to the second half, let's take a break. And when we come back, we will have second half action right here in the NCO Senior All-Star Game right here on the OH Report. Mild or spicy? Ooh, spicy. Lab or poodle? Back roads or highways? Back roads. Okay, which Fritos? That is a tough one. Fritos, down for everything. Back here at the Cedar Point Sports Center for the second half of the Senior and CO Girls Basketball All-Star Game. Team Sokol leading Team Schaefer, 24-21. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray. As we are back underway, Aaron Stevens misses the three, but they get the offensive rebound. Team leaders, Emily Cecil, five points. And on the other side of things, McKenna Depinit, seven points, leading their respective teams. Those are a couple of girls used to, you know, the load scoring for their team, so no surprise there. Nice kick back out. Three in the air. Off the side iron and a rebound to Lindsey Roberts. Rothar back over now to Maddie McCall. The skills champion hands it off. Rothar misses offensive rebound put back no good. Second chance blocked, but they're going to give it the foul. And I'll have two shots. McCall, two of two tonight from the line. And the announcer jinx works even during all hey. starts, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, coach. <laughs> See, even the coaches so cool. know. Just looks said appreciate that. She misses oh, the for boat. Two. Hey, that second one wasn't on me. I wasn't even looking. Yeah. We only we only ever take accountability for one. Uh, three in the air. Can't take accountability for that Natalie one. Natalie Perkins. I think I'm just gonna quiet down before coach rings my neck now. <laughs> twenty four all now. Minute twenty gone by. There's an answer. Now Lindsay Coach is Roberts. Happy. Back on his good side. Almost got the friendly bounce to go, but an offensive rebound. Stevens straight away. Now I thought about it for a second. Perkins for another three. Off the front iron, another offensive rebound. Grace Hall kicks it outside. Perkins blocked and then turns it over. Plus, in the lane, deflected away by Sophie Neese, but another offensive rebound. Yeah, Neese did a nice job of getting back in transition like she does getting a contested shot. Quickly ahead, Aaron Stevens open, layup shot, missed no. it! Missed the bunny! Sometimes you're too open. Yeah, there is. There's a thing. <laughs> and on the other open. end, Rothar with her second field goal of the night. Perkins likes that spot on the floor, Ooh. and it's obvious why after that one. Her second three of this quarter. Scores down 29-27. And we will get substitutions in here for both sides actually now we'll go see if Olivia Baker can go get some threes of her own <laughs> right in front of us Roberts hits the two 31 27 
quickly on the other end. A three by Erin Stevens, her second of the game. 31-30 with 4.45 left in the third. 14 players have scored in this senior game so far. And actually, yeah. Coach, you want to get on the headset with us for a second? All oh, right. boy. Coach Jason Sokol with us now. Coach, uh, what does it mean to be able to coach in a game like this, an all-star game? It's really, it's really neat uh, just to get to know some of the girls that we don't get to see during the, the course of the season. We're so far north, uh, you know, a lot of these girls are from central Ohio, and we don't get to see them. So really neat. It's a cool experience for the girls, cool experience for us as coaches. It yeah. was until uh, the announcer jinx. Anyway. And I apologize again. Uh, and you have quite the athlete in Mariana. 19.8 points per game. First team, Northwest District and D2, District 6. Player of the year in the SBC Lake. I know it, it's going to stink seeing her go. Such a great player for you guys. Yeah, and beyond that, really good person off the floor. She's really welcoming. She brought a bunch of new girls into our program this year. And, I mean, going down all the way to third grade, that our numbers were a little bit low, dwindling. And uh, because of her outreach and the outreach of other, our other seniors, you know, we've got our numbers significantly up this year. So we're really excited about the future. Uh, definitely going to be sad to see her and our other four seniors go, though. Um, and just uh, wh what are the expectations for you guys going into next season? Well, I expect that we are going to play extraordinarily hard. Wow, that's a great move. Great take by Emily Cecil. Another reason why she's all Ohio player of the year pretty much in D4. Yeah, I mean, it turns out that Emily Cecil can play a little bit. I don't <laughs> know. We didn't know that going in. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, in terms of next year, I think Scrappy, maybe we won't be quite as talented as we were this year in terms of scoring the basketball. But, we're going to play hard, and we're going to ugly up some games as best we can and uh, be a little young next year, which is good. So we'll get to, to learn on the fly. I'm really excited about it. Yeah, you guys play. I mean, we have the MOAC, the OCC down here, but the, S the Sandusky Bay Conference is a pretty darn tough conference. It is, yeah, especially our Lake Division. We have Bellevue, Perkins were both really exceptional this year. Norwalk, I think they lost four or five games all season. Uh, top to bottom, there's no there's no easy game for you in the lake, and it helps us get ready for tournaments. And we were knocked out by another lake school, actually Perkins. So. Yeah, you guys were in your uh, sectional championship, and not only do you have that tough SBC, but then you have to come down to the Ashland District, where you have the likes of Shelby and Clear Fork, Mansfield Senior, those teams that you know really you know play ball. Yeah, it really. From a, geez, at least these kids can shoot. Uh, yeah, the D two the D two district was pretty pretty incredible. I mean, there again, you know, there's a couple teams at the bottom that struggled this year, but for the most part, your top ten or eleven were really really strong. And I think you probably had six or seven, maybe even eight teams that could have got out of that district. And then obviously Shelby was the cream of the crop. It was really uh, <laughs> sad. Jeez, this kid. <laughs> oh, see, this is what happens. We get coaches on here, and then they just start hitting. I know, for well, you. You, you know what? That's the key to basketball, just the coach getting out of the way. Pfeiffer with the answer. Oh, man. That's it, teammate and teammate is, yeah, doing this, too. Bucket, bucket on bucket crime <laughs> happening right now. I hope she pulls up and hits another one. Oh, please do. Pull up! No offense to Izzy Duchette. I like her, too, from Western. Yeah, she's great. We had her a couple games as well. Baker takes it in. Ooh. He's her defender. She said you were just talking about Shelby. Let me show you how Shelby plays <laughs> basketball. <sighs> Yeah, how about that? I think, would they lose one game, freshman JV varsity this year, and it was an Elite Eight game? Yeah, it was a game. It, it, it stunk. It was the worst offensive game they played. But, yeah, all out of everybody that played at the high school level, only one loss. It's unheard of. It is. Jeez. Jeez. You got to be pr happy about that. Wait. I saw her on my roster, and I, I needed to thank Natalie. I don't know what <laughs> I did that I got in her good graces. But. <laughs> She's incredible. Look at this deep one. Oh, just off the front. Turns out, yeah, the Seneca East girls can play as well. Who yes, knew? I mean, they, they could probably make a run as well, but they run into Buckeye Central every year in yeah. a district championship game. Right next to each other, too, aren't they? Neighbors? Yeah, yes, they're rivals. rivals. We've they're so conference learned. Conference rivals, yeah. Unreal. Yeah, um, but, Coach, I do appreciate the time. Uh, 
Hopefully we get you in some games next year. You get down to North Central Ohio, we get you on the OH report. But I do appreciate the time, Coach. Yeah, I would love that. Thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you. Coach Jason Sokol, Vermillion head coach and, well, the senior head coach with the 43-38 lead. Yeah, look at that. Holding a five-point lead with chatting with a couple of us guys. It, it's it's bucket on buck. He said bucket on bucket crime. <laughs> Cecil and Pfeiffer back to yeah, back. Yeah, man. Mild or spicy? Ooh. Spicy. Lab or poodle? Back roads or highways? Back roads. Okay, which Fritos? That is a tough one. Fritos, down for everything. Money time here at the senior NCO All-Star Game. 43-42, Team Sokol over Team Schaefer. Travis Berardi alongside Hayden Gray. Schaefer squad looking to take the lead. Stevens pulls up for three off the back iron. No good. A lot of scoring here in that third quarter. A lot of buckets and whippets putting yeah. points up. Good looking shot, just a little short, but followed her shot. Couldn't get it to go. It was Roberts. We'll see if either team's able to pull away. We kind of saw a similar score in that underclass game, but then obviously Team Sellers was able to jump out um, to a sizable lead, and they held on to it. So we'll see if either team here finds a little run and then locks down defensively. Left side, that's Rothar. Another cool thing about the All-Star game, the referees aren't going to yell at you for having your shirt untucked. Yeah, you know, I don't know what it is about, you know, just that difference, but there's just something about having an untaught that's so much more comfortable. It's just bunching up around the yeah. waist, you know. Left side three, short. Rebound. We talked about shoes in the first game. We might as well talk about untucked shirts yeah, in the second. Yeah, you know, rev the official's still going with the tucked shirt. Thought maybe in the fourth quarter. Nice take inside, but couldn't finish was Duchette. And back comes plus. Now the thing about All-Star Games is I don't know if I've seen any of the coaches from either of these games really have to, you know, get off their seat. Just kind of kicking back, relaxing, and enjoying it. And not trying to jinx things, but we haven't had a timeout either. Hey, wow. You know what? I didn't think of that. They get four full timeouts, but why? Well, it's an All-Star Game. We could go on a string of eight full timeouts thanks to Travis bringing up, but we will find out. <laughs> you know what? I had the <laughs> nice Excuse take me. to the hole. Travis untucked Berardi. I knew he was going to do that, too. He he pointed at him. He tried to call a timeout with the, with the tie He's up, but he didn't get it. He's going to call a timeout for me now. That's full. great. <laughs> hey, Emily Cecil, there's a mic right there if you want to. Just talk. How you doing, Emily? Good. How are you? Uh, <laughs> right now, double digits, three threes. How you feeling out there? Feels pretty good. It's a lot of fun to uh, go out here um, and play with just a bunch of great seniors. And Plus hits the three, and he's calling a timeout to sub you in. But we'll probably talk to you afterwards if you're MVP. So hey, go ball Thank out. You. And just like that, Coach, he, he had to do it. Just he, out of he spite. He looked at me, he pointed at me, and said he was going to get one in there. And he does with look the 46-42 lead. So look at him, you know, giving him this game he's, plan. He's just toying with me now. I, I gave that ah. announcer jinx, and now he's just playing. It's this is fun. You know, this what? is funny. It's, this is good. It's the first time we've had a a physical reaction to the announcer jinx, other than a, a missed free throw. Well, we haven't been this close uh, as well to the to the play. Too. Yeah, this is great. Being able to hand off the headset to the coach who's sitting right next to us. This has been fun, and uh, yeah, first time out. Finally able to use our timeout graphic at least, so that's a good thing. Hey, you know, yeah, we got this fancy timeout graphic, and, and finally we're able to get it used now. Oh, a possible little. Yeah, this is rivals. Coach These are friendly rivals as well. Yeah. But, you know, Huron, Vermillion, both SBC yeah, rivals. Yeah, true. Our first timeout of both games. Thanks, <laughs> Coach. So yeah, got, I know. We got, to use, we got to use our, our, our timeout graphic, so you got – yeah, Vermillion That's the first basketball. Ever high school. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, timeout yeah, here, brought to you by what, what did you tell? Here, put this on if you can real quick. Three's up in the air. What did you tell the girls in that uh. timeout that was so important with the four-point lead? <laughs> well, listen, I said we got to go small. We're going to increase the tempo here and try to build this. So, And uh, having a player like that, that. You see that? That's, yep. why, that's oh. why we did it. 
We got we got my subs on the floor. You were trying to talk to Emily and get her out of her game. I saw it, <laughs> so I had to I had to kill the momentum. Well, on she that. just got an assist though. I, well, I know because yeah, yeah. I, I stopped it. Because he I, called, he told her to. Yeah, it was a great timeout. I think that's what you're trying to say. I appreciate Good. that. Thank All you right. very much. Thank you. Uh. I'll let you get back <laughs> to the game now. The art of the timeout. Ball's out of bounds. His team does extend on their lead. They're up seven now with 4:45 remaining. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. We do have real wood to knock on below our yes. feet. So yeah, this is a nice court down here. Yeah, beautifully well, polished. Up here, I should say, at Cedar Point. Three in the air, in and out. Rebound plus. Five points for her, but a bunch of rebounds. Oh, nice ball fake. Bullion. What a Ooh. take. <laughs> Extends on the lead to nine. I'll tell you what, after these pretty ball fakes, the, the bank has been open for everyone tonight. Runner in the lane. Oh, nice bounce for the offensive rebound. Puts back no good. Another offensive rebound. That's what Perkins does, man. She's scrappy. She fights for those. Did it all season long for the Lady Tigers at Galleon. Yeah, she's a good player. Leading, well, in the top ten yeah. in most MOAC categories, which is pretty darn hard when you have five Shelby players that are in it, including Baker, who nearly hits that. But excited to see what she does at Bluffton, playing basketball down there. Three oh. in the air from Cecil, no good. I apologize, Coach. She missed that one. But Baker yeah, makes up for it, and for a sub, we'll get a sub in. Yeah, you know, Adam, tell me. I, I jinxed the shot now with my, my celebratory moves, too. I just got to keep my hands down, and they'll make it. That City simple. Omen. We'll check in. Claudia Pfeiffer checks back in, so will we see some more Cecil versus Pfeiffer here? We'll find out. Pfeiffer looking inside the Becca Conrad. And a foul. Well, and there's a matchup we've seen three separate times this year. Olivia Baker and Becca going at it, but now we got Faith Coon sitting there at the scores table. Might be going back in since Conrad's in there. Pfeiffer gets her own rebound. And in her sweet spot hits the jumper as the Buckeye Central crowd yeah, fun, goes yeah. crazy. Ooh, Cecil tried the other way. Ball bounces Pfeiffer around. Gets it with the rebound. Oh. She's trapped. Full court pressing here. Pressing. As well. <laughs> Pulling out all the stops here. Yeah, I didn't call that out. That was oh, just instincts. Coach said then. no, he did not call that. was just instincts. Sophie Neese, though, with the reversal. Faith Kuhn, what do you have to do in there to contain Becca Conrad? Keep her from getting the ball in the paint. And what do you need to do to continue <laughs> to keep this lead? Score. That was that Faith Kuhn. Thank you for that insight. Appreciate Put it. That a lot. It. Put that quote on a T-shirt. OH t Report junior reporter Faith Kuhn getting ready to go in. <laughs> Wine Staffer hits from beyond the arc, and that will be a substitution timeout. And once again, I get a dirty look from Coach Sokol. <laughs> for talking to his players and turning into a three. Yeah, who knows? I mean, if they come Four down. Four-point game. If they come down left. our way, Coach may not want us to come to the game. Will we see <laughs> the first all-star overtime? Yeah, I just said it. I don't know if we're prepared. What is? What do they do? Is it a shootout? I mean, is it the first bucket to win? I don't know. First half quarter? I don't know. First, yeah, rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Baker to Kuhn. Kuhn's going to try a three Ooh. off the front iron. Rebound to Depinette. Under two to play, 53-49. Nice. Right side, Piper tries a three switch. Now that. Claudia Piper. This is what I love about all-star games. Imagine seeing that combo all year long. 15 points for Piper. Cecil's going to try and answer. Blocked. Out of bounds. And it will go. No, it'll stay. Let's check out Claudia Pfeiffer who just drilled that three. First team Northwest District D4. Obviously got over that 1,600 career point mark the this all -time season. all-time leading score in Buckeye Central history. Faith Kuhn can't get the rebound. Depinet has a chance to take the lead here with 90 seconds left. Depinet oh. over. Nice misses the layup. Gets her own rebound. Depinet's going to try a three. Yes! McKenna Depinet with her second three. 55-53. <laughs> Am I, I'm, I might be sniffing a legitimate timeout. Bose, turnaround jumper's good. We're tied, 55 all. 
65 seconds left. Claudia Pfeiffer fakes the three. On Bows, gets it back out. Nice will try to drive on Cecil. That was a nice matchup. Depinette's another three, no good. Pfeiffer with the rebound, layup, yes! Claudia Pfeiffer out of nowhere. It's 57-55, 45 seconds left. Hey, let's go. We're all here for this. Who will take this? Bows fakes the three, Ooh. gets it back out to Cecil. Cecil on the elbow, gets it over to Faith Kuhn. 30 seconds left in the corner. Now who takes the shot? Kicked. Almost Ooh. stolen, but it's kicked. Clock stops with 22.7 seconds. Coach does have three timeouts remaining. Cecil on the elbow, left side. Bows for the lead. Doesn't get the friendly bounce. Out the depth at 12 seconds. 10 seconds. Is the foul going to come? Pfeiffer was trapped. Gets it to Nice. Nice dribbles around. One second. Pfeiffer for three. Oh. No good, but it's over. Team Schaefer comes back to win. 57 to 55. That was an that was a That's fun game. That's what you want to see right that there. That was a fun all-star game. Smiles all around. Friendly jabbing back and forth between the two rival coaches. But that was that was good. That was some good stuff between a lot of quality talent here. And now 17 points from Claudia Pfeiffer in the game oh, winning true. buckets. Might be talking to her, but hey, I'm yeah, we you, don't know. I'm gonna let you take over here, and I will go and yeah. talk to our MVP, it. whoever it may be. Well, you know what? They do give awards, which is a nice thing that they do. They give certificates to everyone. So we're gonna go ahead. And we're just gonna take a quick break. We'll come back when we have our MVP ready for you. So stick around, and that'll be on the other side. Time now for our Frito-Lay MVP. And I told her after the state Final Four it'd be the last time I talked to her. But you were wrong because we're here and you had to get MVP again. So I just got to talk to you. 17 points. Claudia Pfeiffer in the game-winning bucket. First of all, as usual, congratulations, Claudia. Thank you. Uh, that fourth quarter, you seem to take over. Just uh, go through that and matching Emily shot for shot back there because that was a fun sequence in that second half. Yeah, it was fun. Um, kind of in the fourth quarter. You know, I don't like to lose in general, so I mean, you kind of just put your best foot forward and, you know, it's fun to play in front of, you know, the fans again and, you know, just like players and teammates that you see throughout the season. So it was just a fun experience. And uh, how cool was it to play with uh, some of your rivals and other people that you're playing against during the season, like you just said, but, and then some others, like some Shelby players and things like that. How fun is it to be in an all-star game like this with such good talent? Yeah, it's really fun. Um, the competition's high, and it's just fun to play good basketball. I mean, um, during the season, you kind of, you know, you see these players as your rival, but, you know, in an all-star game, you see them as your teammates and your friends. So it's good to see that aspect, too, and just kind of create bonds and friendships that, you know, that will last a lifetime. Um, I do promise this is the last time I'll be giving you an interview before going off to ODU, but uh, what are you going to do now? You have a little bit of a break. You, you got any spring sports you're going to play, or are you just going to take it, the time off before going to college? Um, I don't play any spring sports, so I mean for me it's just getting in the weight room, getting much stronger for the college level, and just getting shots up in the gym and just becoming the best player I can be for ODU. So I'm really excited though. And as always, to finish things out, anybody want to give a shout out to, go for it. Oh, I'll give a shout out to my family because they came and supported me, so I'm thankful for their support throughout the four years that I played at Buckeye. Once again, Claudia Pfeiffer, our free delay MVP, 17 points, and the game winner in her final high school athletic contest. Congratulations, Claudia. Thank you. Appreciate it. Back to you, Hayden. All right. Thanks, Travis. Again, Claudia Pfeiffer, always a pleasure to talk to her one more time. There's her smile and happy head coach. Probably some family over there and fan base, some teammates from Buckeye Central Nation and Claudia, part of that winning team again. Team Schaefer defeating Team Sokol 57 to 55 to take home the girls' 2022 NCO Senior Game. What a game! That was title. fun. Yeah, that was fun. And 
know what the best thing about it is? You can watch the replay free and forever on the OH Report. We yep, can go home and anywhere. watch this again and again and again as you take a look at Coach Abram Capel and Claudia and some of the Buckets fans and coaches and everything like that. But this was this was a fun time. You know, we we now know what it takes to do multiple All-Star games with skills challenges and all that stuff. But this was a fun afternoon, Hayden. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, you're right. We took in this one up here. And we're, we're going to be heading back up. We'll be back here Thursday. On Thursday for, for the, the Spy Report Boys and Girls All-Star game. So make sure to definitely – chill with us then and we're excited to you know wrap up basketball season on a fun note and then friday we got the news journal all-star game on a delayed uh, tape delayed basis but we'll get the players from north central ohio richland county crawford county and places like that but uh that'll wrap things up here your final score one more time team schaefer 57 team sokol 55 Thanks to Claudia Pfeiffer finishing things out. Great, great.